All right, undoubtedly you are watching this video because you are struggling on the assignment I gave out in class. Uh, I absolutely value these equations. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is work through just one or two problems from each section. Um, I'm going to work through just number one here from this block of two. Um, this is really a simple idea and this problem here requires uh, almost no algebra whatsoever. Um, this is just basic construction and um, just some really simple calculation. Alright, so uh, what we have to do here is we have to write an absolute value equation, okay, to represent um, the, that would have these solutions on it. Alright, so absolute value equations, we're talking about distance. So the first thing I want to do is find the distance between these two points. Um, and what I've got here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so there's a distance of 8, okay, um, in between both of these points. So what we're looking at here is the total distance. is 8, okay? Now, absolute value, okay, what we're talking about here is we know with the absolute value, um, we're going to end up having, okay, since we're talking about an equation, okay, we're going to talk about the brackets, okay, for the notation. We know there's going to be an x in there, okay? Now, this second part, it could be a minus, it could be a plus, who knows? could be anything. Now, this distance here, 8, right? We're talking about the total distance traveled. So what I want to know is the distance from the starting point to um, each of those outsides. So really, I'm traveling twice the distance. So really what I want to do here is divide this by 2. And 8 divided by 2, well, that's obviously going to end up being 4. Okay. And absolute value is distance. So I'm going, to I'm going to get equals 4. That's the total distance. Now what I want to know is where do I start from? Okay. So where I start from, I know that the distance I'm going to be traveling from where I start is 4. So what I could do is kind of go backwards from any of these points. Okay. Or forward from the other one, depending on which one I choose. If I choose this one here, I'm going to go backwards 4. One, two, three, four, and I've got zero. Okay, if I, I could do the same thing on this side here, I could go forward one, two, three, four. Either way, I'm still landing at the same point. So now I want to have the minus starting point minus zero, and now there's the equation. Now I'm just going to go ahead and dress this up a little bit. Um, and my final result would be, well, x minus 0, that's obviously just x. So now what I have here is absolute value of x equals 4. Okay, so really the way that I could think about this is when I say set up an absolute value equation, what I could always do here, and I could think about, I'm going to always have something like this. Okay, I'm always going to start out with this. And now, the stuff I need to figure out, okay, it's going to be x minus the starting point and I'm going to go up here to equals, okay, distance from starting point. Or another way I can think about that is half of the total distance. Or the distance between both points.
Okay. Or what I could actually say here to make make life a little bit easier instead of points, let me say, from both solutions. That might make more sense so that we don't get confused. Because when I say starting points, I'm not talking about these. I'm not calling these points. These are solutions. Okay. All right. Uh, that's kind of how you would do number one. Number two, I want you to do that one on your own. Um, and this one here requires a little bit more thought. This is kind of just a basic example. This one requires a little bit more thought because the starting point, I'll give you a hint, is not at zero. Okay. All right. So now let's work through just a, you know, basic flurry of problems here. Okay. This is the type of stuff that kids will struggle with at first. Okay. And we talked about examples like this in class, but, you know, kids still will get themselves into trouble. All right, ultimately, um, what I want here, I know how to work with an equation that's just this, equal something. But this plus 7 creates a problem. So I want to find some way to get this thing into a form I'm the most familiar with. Okay, you're going to have to forgive this penmanship here. All right, so really the problem I'm running into is this thing here. So I've got to find some way to get rid of the 7 plus. Well, that's pretty obvious. I can subtract 7, and this will cancel, and this will cancel. But I'm going to have to also subtract 7 from this side. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So now these cancel, but I still have to do the, seven, the subtraction of 7 from there. So now what I end up with is the absolute value of x minus 7 is equal to, well, 24 minus 7 is 17. All right, now this I know how to do. This I break up into two separate equations, okay? So I know I've got x minus 7, and I've got x minus 7. Well, if I think about this from the number line, what I've got is absolute value of x minus 7 is 17. That's basically saying, um, what I have here is uh, the, the number x minus 7 is 17 units away uh, total from 0 on the number line. Okay, so I have to go out 17 on both sides. Okay, now obviously that doesn't necessarily mean it could be 7 or 17, but x minus 7, that's some equation for the starting point, 17 units away. So since it's 17 units away from 0, that means it has to be 17 and negative 17. So to get this thing by itself, well, since these are both the same equations, I can just do the same thing to all of the equations, and I know I'm good to go here. And this is basic algebra here. I know that these are going to cancel now. I know these are going to cancel. So what I end up with is x equals 24 and x equals negative 10. So if I thought about this on a number line, okay, and let's say I had 0 here. Okay, well negative 10 is going to be somewhere like here. Let's say this is negative 10. And this is going to be a little bit more over to this side. So we've got 24. So if I were going to model my solutions, I would have one here, and I would have one here. All right. So that's another way we can model our solutions. Okay, just to get used to the, the that expression. All right. Now let's talk about um, this problem here. Now here we run into an issue right out of the gate because we see this six is here, and this minus ten. Okay. Now question is how can we sort all of that out at once. Well, all right. Let's get rid of each part individually. And since I have six times this thing, okay, um, then really, my, then what I want to do is get rid of, if I think about this thing just as an equation in and of itself, I'm trying to solve for the absolute value. Six times a thing minus 10 is equal to 4. I'm going to have to add 10 to both sides first. So 
and then these cancel. And now I get 14 is equal to 6 absolute value of 8 plus x. Okay, so now uh, I have 6 times this thing. So now what I'm going to end up wanting to do here is divide by 6. So I'm going to divide both sides by 6. Now, I'm not dividing anything in here. I know that these are now just going to end up canceling, so we're good there. And I get 8 plus x is equal to 14 over 6, which I know I can reduce 14 and 6, both have 2 in common, to 7 over 3. So now what I can actually do here is get rid of this, because that's just unnecessary at this point. All right, so 8 plus x is equal to 7 thirds. Most kids freak out at this point and would say, well, I must be doing something wrong because I'm getting a fraction. Uh, that's totally not true. So I do the same thing I would do here. I have 8 plus x, and I have 8 plus x, and all we're saying at this point is that this 8 plus x, this number, is 7 thirds away from 0 on the number line. So it's equal to 7 thirds, and here it's equal to negative 7 thirds. Well, now it's the same type of thing. I have 8 plus x, so I'm going to want to subtract 8 from both sides. So let me do this step up here, and I'll do this one in red. I'll keep this one in red, and I'll do this second one here in green so that we can see each step individually. All right, so now what I end up with is x is equal to 7 thirds minus 8, okay, because I subtracted 8 from one side. Whoops, I should be subtracting it on the other. Alright, so 7 thirds minus 8. Well, alright, I'm going to need to rewrite this in terms of thirds because it's not obvious what we're looking at here, so I need to make this 8 over 1. And to make the denominators the same, I've got to multiply the top and the bottom by 3's. So now what I get, well 8 times 3 is 24. 7 thirds minus 24 thirds, well 7 minus 24 is negative 17, yeah, negative 17 thirds. So another way I can model the solution, if you guys remember in class, are these curlies, right, so negative 17 thirds goes right in there. All right. Now let's do the second part. Well, since I know that this is just going to this part here is going to end up being 24 thirds, then now all I have is x is equal to 7 thirds minus 8, which I know is just equal to that 24 over 3, which is kind of what I want it to be anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it that way makes life, oops, that's negative, sorry, 24 over 3. Well, negative 7 minus 24 is negative 31 over 3. So negative 7 minus 24, that's negative 31 over 3. 31 over 3. Okay, let me make that negative really obvious. Okay, so um, that's the type of problem we're looking at here. It's a little, it's a little crazy. It's a little out there, but if we look at each step, it's very clear kind of what we're supposed to be doing here. Um, so, really, the hardest part is just working with the fraction. Okay, that's really the hardest thing that we're actually doing here. Okay, so just remember that, you know, this is something you learned how to do in middle school, so it's not really all that bad. And this is the kind of stuff that kids get wrong all the time.
All right, last one here. I'm only going to do one here just so that you get the feel for what is expected of you here. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and just do number nine. Um, yeah. Or you know what? I'll do number 10. Yeah, I'll do number 10. Number 10 seems a little trickier. So, I've got this thing here. All right, first step. Well, as I said before, you know, we have this thing here is being multiplied. So the first thing I want to get rid of is the addition. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides. So then these are going to cancel. Negative 5 minus 3, well, that's going to end up being negative 8. And I still have this minus. A lot of kids will forget the minus. I have a minus 2 out front, which means I'm multiplying by negative 2. So what some kids will do here, and this is something you'll see pretty often, is they'll add 2 to both sides. Here's the problem with that. This is technically negative 2 times this. So adding won't cancel it out. So you can't actually do that. Just by adding 2, you haven't gotten rid of the negative 2. What you want to do here is actually divide by negative 2. Okay? So now that you've divided by negative 2, a negative divided by a negative, well, that's going to end up being a positive. Um, so now what I end up with is x plus 1, absolute value, is equal to 4. Okay, because the negative divided by a negative is positive 8 divided by 2 is 4. Okay, that should be clear. All right, so now we set this thing up like this. So I've got x plus 1 is equal to 4. Whoopsie, a little smudge action there. Okay. And x plus 1 is equal to negative 4. Well, as stated before, we can just kind of wholesale. Subtract 1, subtract 1, subtract 1, subtract 1. It's going to cancel these. And my final solutions, x is equal to 3, which I look up here at the table. That's letter C. So letter C pops in there. Okay, and then I go down here, I've got x is equal to negative 5. So now I go up here, and there's negative 5. So e goes right in there. Okay, and that's how we end up finding those solutions. Now, as stated before, there are other ways to represent these solutions. Another way we could see them is in the solution set. Generally speaking, the grammar of the solution set, um, if the notion of grammar and math makes sense, smaller solution goes first. Um, I know in the last problem, I kind of forgot that. Uh, let me make sure about that. Yeah, because negative 31 is definitely less than negative 17, uh, but you get the picture. Um, I'm not going to come down on you for, um, you know, grammar. Uh, another way that uh, this could be represented is with the number line. Okay, uh, so if I have 0 here, we'll plop negative 5 here on the number line, and then a 3 will be over here. Um, get a lot of smudge. I need to stop being so heavy-handed. Um, another way to represent this would be with the solutions. So boom and boom. Obviously, there'd be 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 on the proper number line. Um, and, you know, another way that this can be asked is where you have to do matching with these, okay? All right, um, I hope that this has been helpful. Um, I encourage you guys to finish the rest of these problems on your own. Um, and I hope that this can serve as a reference to you guys when we get ready to do uh, thousands more problems of this nature. All right, happy, uh, happy solving.